Since ancient times, Japanese architecture has refined the art of building with wood. 17 types of Japanese craft techniques related to constructing and restoring with wood are listed by UNESCO as intangible cultural heritages of humanity. One of these crafts is the traditional way of making gold leaf known as Enske Kimpaku. This gold leaf, just one ten thousandth of a millimeter thick, is widely used to decorate and restore buildings, interiors and art objects. The Toshogu Shrine in Nikko is also a world heritage. This magnificent shrine is notable for its conspicuous use of gold leaf. The gold leaf on its 17th century buildings requires regular restoration. Traditionally made gold leaf is applied to a lacquer base, one sheet at a time. It's a highly skilled job. As long as there's a need for this special kind of restoration work, we will have to continue to train people in the art of making gold leaf using this traditional method. The center of Japanese gold leaf production has long been the old castle town of Kanazawa in Ishikawa. If the air is too dry, static electricity causes problems when making gold leaf. The high humidity of Kanazawa's climate is one reason why the craft has prospered here for over 400 years. First, pure gold is melted with tiny amounts of silver and copper to form an alloy. The alloy is rolled into a sheet that's then cut into short lengths. From this point, we start the processes that will make it incredibly thin. Matsumura Kenichi is a traditional gold leaf artisan. Our method produces gold leaf that's exceptionally soft and flexible, so it clings perfectly to any surface, whatever the shape. As the inheritor of this craft, Matsumura is passing his skills to his son, Noriyuki. They're placing sheets of gold leaf between layers of washi paper. But this is special washi, made by a unique process. Rice straw is burned to produce ash. Adding water to the ash makes lye, in which the washi is soaked. We can't make ultra-thin gold leaf if static electricity is present. Soaking the paper in lye is an effective way to prevent static being generated. At this point, the gold leaf is about one five thousandth of a millimeter thick. Now they move to the most important process. It may look like the hammer is beating the gold leaf to thin it, but that's not what's happening here. It's not the beating that thins the gold leaf, it's the heat it produces. The heat generated by the hammer blows softens the gold leaf so it gradually spreads out, eventually becoming as thin as one ten thousandth of a millimeter. The artisan taps the surface of each sheet to check the quality. This reveals its distinctive softness, more luxuriant than other gold leaf methods. The final step is to trim the sheets into precise squares. This method produces gold leaf so soft, it's even used to decorate food. The secret behind the golden glow that illuminates so much Japanese art and architecture, gold leaf has a brilliance that never dims.